Hello. Um, so you've had a very interesting career. Um, I was wondering if you could give us a brief um, outlook of the path you've taken as from the you know, ski to where you are today. Yeah, when I was uh, a kid, my dad took me on a holiday um, to Austria, which was for a week skiing. I was quite young at the time, I was, I was three. I hated it. And uh, you know, whenever I could, I used to just go say, Dad, I need to go to Lou, and I'd lock the door, and he wouldn't be able to get me out afterwards. But after a couple of years, I really got bitten by the bug. And um, and then I was skiing quite a lot in ski school, and the ski teacher said, oh, well, you know, the English could never ski race. And so I thought, well, OK. Um, I've got a job to do here, and that's what motivated me to show there's possible somebody from Great Britain who could, could compete with the Swiss and the Austrians in downhill racing. So that kept, that sort of, as soon as school was finished, I devoted my life to ski racing. Um, and then when I was 31, it all stopped, and because um, it's a young man's sport, and then you have to start thinking about what you do with your future. Through the last couple of years in ski racing, I got to know David Vine and the BBC and used to help them with their Ski Sunday coverage that had just started and um, enjoyed doing that. But then I moved into another line of business, which was um, importing distribution of ski equipment. That um, lasted for about 12 years and I then went back into television. And I was working with IMG. They asked me to help them produce... Um, to research, actually, the um, Olympic preview programs they got commissioned to do for the 1998, 1998 Olympics. And I just really enjoyed being behind the camera. I'd done some commentary, I'd done some presenting. Um, it's not something that I got, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it, but it's not something that I really felt that I wanted to do or felt that I had as much control of as if you then take the step behind the camera when then you're actually in control of the storytelling process and enjoyed marrying sound and music and images together and that that's really what inspired me and I really found something that I wanted to get out of bed in the morning for and um, since then that's it's just continued and continued and as you get older as the the responsibilities change um, I mean, I don't spend enough any time really in edit suite. Um, I wish I could because I enjoyed that the tranquility of it, the reward from it. Now it's more a question of getting, you know, a group of people to deliver material, and working with new people, um, young people, um, and enabling them to deliver as good and as an interesting a story as possible. And that's really where I'm now with ESPN, is um, trying to work on just that. And live television has different challenges to, let's say, just documentary making or making programs. It's, um, you know, it's, it, it's it, the storytelling process on the on the fly, but that still needs a lot of preparation, needs getting the right people in, those people need looking after in certain ways, and there's lots of different responsibilities because you have a large group of people and then personalities get involved and different people have different ideas, different opinions, so the whole thing gets a lot more complex and sometimes that dilutes actually the, the essence of what you do. I mean, there's nothing nicer than sitting in, having edited a lovely program with some great music on it, just doing the sand mix afterwards, just you and the sand engineer fine tuning something that you've worked on. Um, that's really the beautiful part of television production. Once you get into the broadcasting side, it almost becomes huge and enormous, but still, even though, even then, all those small little bits and pieces count. Whatever you do, you've always got to work on making what you're involved with the best that it can be. That's that should always be your ambition and your motivation. Great. And for somebody, particularly students that are aspiring to be in your position, essentially, um, what skills and personality do you think they should? Um, there's not one mold. You know, I th you know, there's if if we, if if there was one, I think the the 
the danger is thinking, yes, that is the way you should go. It's very interesting when, when we hire people in, um, we tend to get a mixture of people. So different people will ding, bring different strengths because somebody can't be great at everything. For example, some better, some people are better at writing. Some people might be better technically. Some people might be better visually. Um, so it comes really it comes to being the best that you are and trusting what you are really good at and and having faith in that and being able to communicate that to the person when you walk into the room not by being overconfident but by being genuine authentic so that you can feel the emotion connection to your you know to 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 that emotive connection to what drives you is really what I look for with people because um, that will give you that sense that you've got that drive to go the extra mile and be committed to what you're doing. So is there any advice that you'd give to students um, that want to get into the industry? Yes, I think ask as many questions as you can from whoever you come across. You know, if you're work if you know if, if you're working with a, 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 a cameraman whose work that you enjoy, you know, ask him why or how he's doing it. You know, what are his fundamental principles? Um, you can never ask enough questions because information from all quarters is, is, is what's helpful and from different people's personal experiences and then how you translate that into how you go about things I think you'll find will be a benefit. But I would just ask questions, be inquisitive, and and be interested in what you're doing. And if and if you're enjoying what you're doing, that will be easy. If you follow a route in something that you believe in, you know, be it sound, be it camera work, you know, be it editing, be it the actual production side, be it you know, combination of all those. Just concentrate on doing what you feel you can be your best at, and then. As I said, ask as much information from anybody around you at every opportunity. Great, thank you. Uh, may I ask one more question? Sure. Um, I don't know how many you've got there, so I didn't uh, know it was well, another way to see. You, but you just want to, you don't want to keep it too long. I don't, well, no, uh, fine. I mean, whatever. I just want to tapes cheap. Um, well, digits are cheap. Memory's cheap. Where you are happiest? Was it on the ski slopes in front of the camera, behind the camera? <laughs> it's tough to beat racing down a mountain that you have to yourself two miles of an icy track where you're putting your neck on the line it's tough to beat the emotional highs and lows that you go through in that stage um, and the, the 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 adrenaline rush the uh, the drug I mean it blows your mind out when you get down to the bottom it it's it it it's man against mountain. It's the ultimate challenge. It's, it's the stopwatch is part of the equation, but for those two minutes, it's you against the icy cliffs. And can you ride that razor blade on the way down and keep on your feet? And if you don't, it might hurt. That 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 is just something that you know you you can't beat. Having said that. When I've sat in an edit suite and I've had a composer deliver some music, I've taken somebody else's pictures from a film and sort of done something historically and pulled it together with some stories around it. And you mix that all together and you have your final print. You know, the emotion of pulling all those elements together and, and, and that being of your own work is also very rewarding as well. So, but how can it compare? Nothing can compare to um, downhill racing. In on, in on honesty, and I was very lucky and privileged to be able to do that. Subsequently, though, you know, uh, we had a a colleague who joined us. Her first one-hour show, we decided to. It was about the Rugby World Cup winners, 2003. And the, the team had gone out and collected interviews with the rugby players telling the story from their perspective. And 
there was no narration in it. It was just the rugby players and the commentary from the... In fact, it was the Australian commentary, which is even better, obviously, when we beat the Australians. Um, but it, you know, it was their, their view of, of the, of the uh, Rugby World Cup. And we did a presentation in that film in a Disney cinema in, in Hammersmith. It was the first time we'd ever done that. Normally you see $100 million films up there. And we had this uh, film that cost us £15,000, which is not a lot for an hour of broadcast. And um, to watch that on the screen, somebody who's made that their first film, to be able to get tears in people's eyes, to be able to get the goosebumps and the hair standing on the back of your neck, and to have facilitated that, again, was as rewarding to me as actually having made it myself. And that's that's the fascinating thing is is seeing the young mind who's coming in with fresh approaches, different ideas, and maximising that. That is that is in some ways the most fascinating of all because it's the future which is exciting. The past is great memories, but the future is what is exciting. So that's most rewarding for you at the moment, which I assume is sort of as opposed to what your rewards were. When you're younger now, nowadays you're switching to young people coming through and showing their work. It, 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 it's seeing people come in and blowing the cobwebs out of, you know, breaking the rules and winning. And, and you know, coming up with something new and fresh. And uh, that's the most inspiring thing out. And I think, if, you know, if you look historically, it is those fresh minds, it is those, those inspirations. It's the Einsteins and such that always break through, and break the mold and break the ideas. That's what makes all of our lives vibrant, you know, be it an, an artist, be it an actor, be it a writer, be it a presenter. It is those people who come in and, and, and have that gift and it's enabling people to to maximize those gifts, I think, is is the most fascinating thing out because that's that's what makes this world a very special place.